Let's do an example. So here we have a two link manipulator. Remember we call the lengths of each length R1 and R2. And what we'd like to know is given a certain orientation for theta1 and theta2 and the current speeds of theta1 and theta2, that's theta1 dot and theta2 dot, how fast is the end effector moving? What's its linear and angular velocity? So in order to do that, uh, we need to apply these formulas that we've learned. We want to know what is j of q, where q is, remember this, this is called the Jacobian, and it is a function of the current joint values. And so this is really what is j of our two joints, our theta 1 and theta 2. And that is equal to a matrix that has six rows and two columns because a rigid body has six degrees of freedom. So we've got the formulas for that right up here. We have a revolute joint for each of these, so we're going to be able to write that out. And I'll start here. My first one is going to be how does theta 1, so I'm going to write my note for this is the theta 1. How does theta 1 influence? And so for theta 1, it's a revolute joint. So the upper half is going to be z, this is 1 minus 1, so this is z0, z0, cross product with O, and N in this case is all the way to 2, O2 minus, no, this is theta 0, because I'm at 1 minus 1, so theta 0, minus O0, that gives me my top column. Now my bottom row is the revolute joint, so that's going to be just Z0. Now on this other side, I have, uh, this is for joint 2, so it's going to be Z, and that is 2 minus 1, so Z1, cross product with, this is going to be O2, that's O N is O2, minus O of, uh, this is O2, so o, the I is equal to 2, 2 minus 1 is O1, and the bottom row is going to be located on Z1. Now what I need to do is say, well, where are these numbers? Well, I've got them all into my matrix. First thing that I need is, where is Z0? I need that for two places. Z0 is the third column in this rotation matrix. Because remember, this matrix here is R, no, I'm lying there. We know what Z0 is. Z0 is equal to 0, 0, 1, because it is our basis factor. So we've got that already. The Z1, Z1 is given by this third column, because this is R1 and Z1. And this column here is Z1 and from Z1. So I've got that. Now the other things that I need are going to be, well, what is O2? And I've got O2 right here, O2, and I've got O1 right here, O1. So I also need what is O0, and that is going to be just 0, 0, 0. Um, I might as well figure out what this quantity is. This quantity is theta 2 minus theta 0. Now that's just right here. I do have to calculate what is uh, O2 minus O1. That's O2 minus O1. That's going to be just the quantity R2, T12, and R2, S12, T0. That's the difference. Now I've got all the components I need in order to build. You know, just to help us out, I'm going to write down all the steps. It would be a shame to skip something. So I have that J of Q is equal to this matrix Z0 is 0, 0, 0, 1. I'm going to take the cross product of that with 32 minus 3. That would be R1C1 plus R2C12 over R1S1 plus R2S12 and then Z0. And then my bottom column Z0 is 0, 0, 0. 1, and I've got my dotted line here for the next column. It's going to be Z1, which is the same as Z0. So it's C01, cross product with R2, C12, R2, S12, 0. And then this combination is 0, 0. Now, these cross products are going to be nice and easy because I've got mostly zeros. You remember your rule for the cross product. Um, and then I go for my X term, it's going to be. This term minus this term. So it's minus R1 S1 minus R2 S1 2. The next term is going to be uh, this term minus 0. It's going to be R1 C1 plus R2 C1 2. Uh, and then 
0, we've got 0, 0, 1 on the bottom here. The next column is actually going to be easier because I don't have one of these terms. It's going to be just minus R2, X1, 2, and then be R2, C1, 2, over 0, 0, 1. And there we go, we finished that. Delightful. Now, the next question we have is, well, what's the velocity of link 2 of a 3 line robot? Right? How fast is this link 2 moving? In order to do that, we're going to need just a little bit more information. We're going to need the rest of our T matrices. So there we go. Here's our other T matrices. And then again, we're going to have to build a Jacobian. So our Jacobian is going to be, uh, I've got my J of Q is equal to, again, uh, I've got three revolute joints. So the first column will be Z0 cross uh, my OC, this is the point that I care about, its velocity, minus um, O0. And then that'll be rotated around Z0. The next column is going to be Z1 cross OC, this is the point that I care about, minus O1. And then Z1. And then I get to my last column. See, we can use a Jacobian to figure out the speed of any point on my robot, but this is a kinematic chain, which means the movement of my third joint isn't in effect um, this OC. And so I can just write that this is going to be the zero matrix uh, and there's zero contribution here. And so if I write this out, this is the Jacobian, JQ is equal to the Jacobian of my three joint variables. They're going to be theta one, theta 2, theta 3. Well, what that's going to give me is, again, it'll give me a, a 6 by 3 matrix, but that third column is going to be all zeros. So I can just write that down from the previous step, R1, S1, minus my distance. Now here, I've got to define this distance. The whole distance, remember, is R2. This shorter distance here We'll call that RC because it's the distance to the center point of that link. So it's just going to be RC S12, uh, R1, uh, C1 plus RC C12, 0, and then 0, 0, 0 for this bottom half. My next column here is only going to have that RC component. So it's minus RC S12. R, C, C, 1, 2, 0. I'm sorry, this was this should be a 1. I'm rotating around the first axis. 0, 0, 1. Whereas my final column is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And there we've done it. Again, we did not need to know this third joint because the third joint isn't affecting something that's on the second joint. All right, let's do a slightly more interesting example. This is the famous Stanford manipulator. So it's got a revolute, revolute, prismatic, revolute, revolute, revolute. So it's got at the end, this is the uh, a spherical wrist. And so when you're given something complicated like this, again, we need to build it out. And the first thing we need to figure out is which quantities am I going to need? And to do that, well, we've got to follow our rules for our Jacobian. But we've got one, two, three, four, five. We've got five revolute joints and one joint that is that is prismatic. We know, for instance, that J of Q is going to have six joints. Let's look at this first joint. First joint is going to be Z0 cross product with O6 minus O0. And it's going to rotate around C0. My next column is going to be Z1 cross O6 minus O1. And it'll be rotating around Z1. Now we have the same pattern. Well, the third joint is going to be different. Because this third joint is our prismatic joint. And so what direction is it moving along? Well, it's moving along Z2. 
and it's uh, got zero prismatic. We need some more room here for the rest, but the rest are going to be interesting uh, because they're all they're all moving around uh, that same point, which we call the wrist center. This is O C my wrist center, and so that's going to simplify some things a little bit. Um, where it's going to be uh, Z3 cross O6 minus OC over Z3, and 4 and 5 are going to be the same things, only they'll be rotating around Z4 and 5. Now what we can do is we can simplify this just slightly because there's some nice uh, there's some nice symmetry going on here. So we can say, you know, you know, if i is equal to one or two, then j i is equal to uh, z i minus one cross product with o six minus o i minus one all over z i minus 1, uh, j3 is equal to z2 over 0. And then we've got this nice format for j4, uh, 5, 6 is equal to uh, z i minus 1 cross product with o6 minus oc over zi minus 1. Ta-da! And so now we'd have to say, well, what are all these quantities? All these quantities that I care about? Well, I need to know where z1 is. I need to know where z2 is. So z2 is here. I need to know where z3 is. z2, z3. I need to know where Z4 is. I need to know where Z5 is. So right here. Next things I need to know is I need to know where O6 is. I need to know where my OC is, which is right here. I need to know where O1 is. These are all the terms that I need in order to build this. I am not going to multiply this out by using a tool like Mathematica. Uh, so remember, a scar arm, it has a, a revolute joint. It's got an offset uh, for this first one. We're going to call this one R1. Its distance here uh, to its prismatic joint is another revolute joint, R2. Distance coming down is D3. Uh, there's no moment arm on this spot. So we've got our following T matrices, which are all rather straightforward. And now it is time to build our um, to build our Jacobian. So what is our Jacobian? Well, our Jacobian is going to be J of Q. Well, that is really a J of what are our variables? Our variables are theta 1, theta 2, D3, and theta 4. So what we're going to end up with when we write a Jacobian is we're going to have four columns and two rows um, for our JB and our J omega. It'll actually turn into six rows, uh, each of three, three rows each. So let's let's just start this. And so in the first row, uh, this is a revolute joint, so it's revolving around Z0 cross. Um, our, our final joint, O-N, is going to be O4, O4 minus O0, and the axis we revolve around is C0. The next term is also revolute, so this is going to be rotating around C1, cross O4 minus O1 over Z1. Now, now we've got a prismatic joint, and so it does not contribute anything for our angular velocity, 
but it does contribute. It's moving in the, the axis z2. And finally, we need to know this final revolute joint. So that is going to be z3 cross o4 minus o3. And that is um, over z3. So now we have to identify all the terms. Well, we already know what z0 is. That's just 0, 0, 1. Uh, we have to figure out, well, what is z1? Well, z1 is given this quantity here. Uh, we need to know where is z2. z2 is given by matrix T20. And we need to know where is z3. Uh, z3, z3. Z2, Z1. Add that. We also need to know what is O4. Where is the end effector? Well, this thing right here, that's O4. Okay, so we've got it there, there, and there. O0, we already know that's 0, 0, 0. O1, it's going to be right here. O1. And then we only need O3. So O3 and O3. Lovely. So now it's time to work this out. Not as bad as you might worry, because if we project this robot down, look down from the top, it's going to have a joint here, it's going to have a revolute joint here, and then the prismatic and the revolute are on top of each other. So it's really just a two-link manipulator. We've done that several times, so we're going to feel pretty good about that. The Z0 cross O4 is just going to be the minus of the second term, minus R1, S1, minus R2, S1, 2, and the positive of the first term, R1, C1, plus R2, C1, 2. Zero in this, and then we're rotating around Z0, which is 0, 0, 1. Now my next term is going to be Z1 cross O4 minus O1. Z1 is the same as Z0. And so it's going to be the same as this term. We're just going to be able to drop the first two spots. It would be minus R2, S1, 2, and R2, C1, 2, 0, and 0, 0, 1. And then our next column that we have here is going, oh, this is a lovely one. This is Z2. Well, if we look at Z2, remember it's pointing in the opposite direction. So it would be 0. 0, minus 1. So this D that we get actually pushes us downwards when we move in a positive direction there, which is interesting. No angular velocity, because this movement here, it's a prismatic joint. No angular velocity is contributed. Uh, now let's look at the fourth joint that we have. It's going to be Z3 cross O4 minus O3. Now before I get excited, let's just look at the difference between O4 minus O3. See, they are exactly the same. The only difference that they have is in this D4 variable. That D4 that was parallel with my Z3, that's not going to contribute anything. Now watch this. Pretend that this is my third joint of my manipulator. I move it up and down. I can get some prismatic. But then I revolve that last joint. As I revolve that around, you can see because the nubbin of this pen is moving back and forth, that ang you know, gives some angular velocity, but it doesn't move the tip of the end effector at all. Uh, 0 4 minus 0 3 is 0. Cross with that Z, I'm going to get 0. 0, 0, but I do have a vector that I'm rotating around. I'm rotating around that 0, 0, minus 1. And so this is inverting the direction of my end effector, which makes sense. You know, that last rotation is going to be upside down compared to the first two. And there we have it. J of Q for the SCARA manipulator. Solve.